Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And again, I've teamed up with Silverstone Auctions because they've got a big sale coming up. And it's July 31st and the 1st of August, the actual sale days. And there are 226 cars entered in this auction coming up. Um, so I'm down at Henry's Car Barn again to have a whiz round all these cars. I'm staggered at how many we've got to get through today. So we're going to rattle through them. Quick little bit of um, how it works at the beginning is just to say the auction is a game because of lockdown you cannot actually attend on auction day but we're trying to put this video out as early as we can because its viewing is live from now so you ring up silverstone auction say can i view whatever lot you want to look at and you come down here and you're, you've got about an hour with the car or several cars the ones you actually want to bid on so have a look at silverstone auction website see how it all works and then if you want to bid on the cars well then you have to register as a bidder and you can do it on the telephone bid you can do a proxy bid um, or you can just bid online as well. So there you go, that's how it's all gonna work. But with so many cars to get through, let's crack on. And the first one I stumble across is this Mura SV. And this Mura is guided at 1.8 to 2.4 million. The SV is the ultimate version of the Mura. We ignore the SVJ, there's a handful of those. But this one, what I love about this one, this has been used, it's right-hand drive, and got air conditioning. Very, very rare air conditioning in a Mura, and you really need it from my time in Muras. Normally, you just get a little air vents that uh, blow from the rear bulkhead at your elbow, and to have air conditioning actually coming at you is a big plus, but it's super rare. There's only two or three Muras with air conditioning from factory. Interesting history of this one in that it was produced as a left-hand drive car and then a buyer uh, in Australia said, I will buy that car if you make it right-hand drive. So before it got delivered out to Australia, the factory changed it to right-hand drive. So it's a right-hand drive from factory, although the initial records say it's left-hand drive, 51,000 kilometres. So it was properly used by that first owner in Australia, which is fantastic but has recently been thoroughly gone through um, out in Australia uh, and it is superb. I lifted the hatch on it, the engine looks terrific on it, really is absolutely pin and it's recently had a full service and a check through over at Bob Houghton as well. I don't know, I mean they are expensive cars but they're just a dream this car, it defines supercar you know, is it the first, world's first supercar? I suggest it probably is. And with the red and the gold wheels, I think it looks the part really nice. Very, gonna be very interesting to see what that sells for. Now, other cars here, I mean, where do you start in a building like this? Um, we'll look at the XJ220 in a moment. I was actually just gonna, another, um, this Ferrari Testarossa, I thought was just worth a look. I've got a big soft spot for Ferrari Testarossa. I've owned one now. I bought it from Silverstone Auctions, I think in 2015. I've had five great years with it. And um, I was actually, I was talking to Chris Harris last night and he, we were both becoming TR bores really. We just think they're the essence of Ferrari, everything we want in Ferrari. The sound of the flat 12 in a Testarossa or 5.1 TTR is fantastic. And what I like about this car is it's 88 uh, year, this one. It's non-cat. You can tell because they're rounded at the back. So it's no catalyst. That means they sound even better. Left-hand drive, um, it's, 2, 000, it's three and a half thousand kilometers from new, this car. It actually needs a belt service. It, I looked at the tires, they're 2007, the tires on it. And that was the last time it had a thorough going over. But I saw a time capsule Testarossa and guided quite sensibly at 100 to 120,000 pounds. Oh, something I ought to mention is this here, SA30 collection. This is Silverstone Orchard's 30 cars in here to celebrate the 30th year of the Silverstone Classic event at Silverstone. Where these cars were gonna be auctioned, they're all no reserve cars. So the Testarossa is no reserve. Another of the SA30 cars is this XJ220. What I find interesting in this one is it's been to America and has been federalized. So a buyer could buy this and take it back to the US and it would comply, which is unusual with XJ220 because this is a European delivered car. 4,000 kilometers from new, this car. And 
it's uh, been sorted by Dom Law, and I think it looks really good in this blue. Has the usual um, grey interior. A standard car, but looked after, used fairly recently. I have, you know, it's done two or three thousand miles since coming back from the US with an owner. Dom Law's looked after it. I'm going to be very interested in what this makes. It's guided at 290 to 350,000, this car. Then we move to another collection. These are all come from Anthony Hamilton. So the Hamilton family, um, Lewis Hamilton's dad, there's a number of cars in here that he's entered this, this time. And the first one is this Ford GT. Now, I really like these. Super usable, um, sort of supercar, hypercar. Still look the part. Got the crazy doors, as you know, it would um, decapitate you if you don't know how to use the door and you'll bang your head. But watch my video on it and it'll teach you how to get in and out of these things. They're, what are they now, 15 years old now, built to celebrate 100 years of Ford. They're just like an overgrown Elise to drive, a sort of supercharged delivery, power delivery, manual gearbox, a raw analog car. And this car has only covered 43 miles in its life. That ought to change. I suppose it's going to be go into another collection, but it is fairly obviously utterly perfect, maintained, etc. Guided at um, around the £280,000 mark. I, my video guy will put the actual price down below, I think. Oh, I might have it here. Guided at two hundred and fifty to £280,000, which is about the price for one of these now, especially with just 43 miles recorded. There's more um, Anthony Hamilton cars here. Th this is a rare car. This is um, Italia 2000. This is a TR3 um, base car done, done in Italy, different uh, bodywork extremely wet, rare and sought after. It's guided at 120 to 140,000. But what I really wanted to show you was this Mini. Now, I love this little Mini. This is 1971 Wooden Picket Radford Mini Cooper S. This was, this is so 60s stroke, early 70s, this car. Um, Mini Cooper S was a cult car uh, back then. And to have a wooden picket car, well, that's what you saw only in Mayfair and places like that. Ringo Starr had one, etc. But the Radford um, was a conversion you could get beyond wooden picket. And uh, at the back, it actually adds a hatchback to it and a folding rear seat. It's a sort of more practical wooden picket Mini. Incredibly expensive. Um, but looking at the details on this car, it was £3,487 in 1971 to have this conversion, this hatchback seat done, at a time when the Ford Cortina cost £968. So you could have bought three and a half uh, Cortinas for the price of having this sort of conversion done on your car. You can see it's all slightly strange. I move this. There you go. When's the last time you saw a hatchback Mini? And I love the name of it. It's the Mini Deville. They're, they're still an expensive car today, actually. Um, this car is guided at 45 to 55,000 um, pounds. But such a rare thing. And uh, you just know it's going to be an absolute hoot to drive. Packed out with leather. It almost looks Jaguar-esque inside. But love to see it here. There's quite a few more Hamilton cars here. There's um, twin car MGA here. Quite like this Corvette. This is super smart. A 1957 Corvette manual gearbox on it as well. And then this TR5, which is described as probably the best example in the world, a sort of proper Concorde car. Interestingly, they're both valued around the same price. So guided at 75 to 90, I think this one's 80 to 90,000 pounds. What I really want to show you is over here, this lovely little Mini Cooper here. Now this is a Downton Mini Cooper. Uh, this is pre Mini Cooper S and Downton were a little tuning outfit uh, in the UK and they put bigger valves, twin carbs on it, etc back in the day and this has a quite an interesting history this car and Anstead um, discovered it in Ireland and has done a full restoration on it when um, the, for the love of cars but doesn't it look so cute in this perfect green and the sort of off-white uh, roof on it all standard when you look round it I also love it's got the original sort of Dunlop tyres these Aquajet tyres I remember these um, back in the day, there's, they were the best things for uh, wet conditions and it's even got Dunlop 10-inch uh, wheels on it as well. Um, after that sort of wooden picket car, I just think this says 60s as well. It's quite early, been, uh, what is it, 1964, this car. 
um, and guided at 22 to 28,000 pounds. But I think that would grace any sort of collection. Another thing I ought to say about that is part also no reserve. Okay, another car in this SA30 collection, no reserve, is this. Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.5 16-valve Evolution 2. A long name, but a highly collectible car. This was at peak of the um, touring cars racing in Europe, and it was right up against the E30 M3 and you had Evolution, and then each year allowed to do 500 models as, a, as an improvement the following year. So this is 92, this is the ultimate where it sort of peaked this Evolution trend. More wings on this one than you've seen on anything else. It's like Batmobile. The Cosworth engine gone up to 235 horsepower on this one, four cylinder on this car. And what I love about this one, it was obviously enjoyed by its original owner, for 30 years and he did 41,000 kilometers in it. So it's been used this one and it's guided at 165 to 190,000 pounds, a lot of money, but they are so collectible, these cars. What's interesting in this sale though, there's three examples of these sort of Cosworth 190Es. There's an Evo 1 hiding over there and there's the standard one in another store. Let's go and have a look at the Evo 1 now. Now, this is the other one I wanted to show you. This 190E then, but 2.5, rather, it started life, this Cosworth one, as a 2.3 litre engine. It went to 2.5 in 1989. The rules allowed them a bigger engine. And this is one of those. And it was known as the Evolution. It's now known as Evolution 1 because we didn't know it was an Evolution 2 coming when this was first produced. Super rare, left-hand drive again. All these are left-hand drive, these uh, Cosworth Mercedes. Um, 117,000 kilometres, so yeah, a used example, but super tidy looking around it. I just love seeing them here. You see M3, E30 M3s everywhere, but not these Mercedes. And um, what's interesting, this one, this had the AMG Power Pack. This was about two, 202 horsepower when it came out. That added another 30 horsepower. So 232 horsepower versus 235 for the Evo 2. So almost within spitting distance. And that was done at the factory at AMG. They actually put its um, different cams and bigger throttle bodies. And the other nice thing about this, it's half the price of the Evo 2. This one is guided at 80 to 90,000 pounds. Just something to comment on in this sale. I can't get over how many green cars there are. A wonderful 280 SL um, Pagoda here. There's Aston's Galore's, a Vanquish here. This is the moss green. That was the launch color. I first sat in one at launch 2001 and we went round Millbrook in that exact spec like that a convertible um, Virage there in green. They're just green cars everywhere. Oh, it's a 550. Now, I really like these. Maybe I ought to feature this. This is a Aston Martin uh, Vange, oh, V8 Coupe. Just looks great in this colors. It's what it's like the, um, they updated the lights on it. Just made it look a bit more modern. I don't know, so many cars to look at. So this Mercedes SLR McLaren is also part of the Hamilton collection, 2006, uh, this car, um, about 13,000 miles, I think it's covered. Um, I'm not actually gonna feature that, feature them before, they're such a dramatic car. But what followed it for Mercedes was, was the SLS. Now there's an SLS Coupe here and this SLS Roadster here. Now what I find interesting about these two cars, these are much easy, uh, much more affordable to run. With the trouble of the SLR, it does have a very high maintenance cost, but these two, I think these are gonna be more and more sought after as time goes on. They're a wonderful drive machine. They had the normally aspirated um, 6.2 litre engine, 583 horsepower. It just sounds like thunder, this car, uh, 197 miles an hour. Obviously, the gold wing doors on the coupe. But when I was at Evo, we were very surprised when the Roadster um, came along because it was a sweet handling car. And there's very diff little weight difference between the two. There's around two kilos, that's all, slightly heavier for the Roadster version. They were more expensive. Um, you've got a fold-in fabric roof. So don't think this is a Mercedes SL. This is very different. SLS is much more sporting, lightweight, and it's just a sweet handling car. Now, this is 13,000 miles, the SLS Coupe, and this is about 10,000 miles 
here, uh, but the roadster is guided 100 to 120,000 and the coupe 120 to 140,000. I think the uh, SLS roadster is one to watch and to be at a discount to a coupe is very telling. Uh, I think you'll get a huge amount of enjoyment out of both, but I would probably pick the roadster. Another car I wanted to show you is over here. Now, sorry, the cars are so jammed in here, it's really quite hard to show them off well. This is, we're in a bit of a dark corner with a black car, so my camera will be getting very upset. Um, but I think this is also part of the SA30 um, collection as well. I ought to mention those SLS are both uh, no reserve cars, as is this GT3. Now this is a 997 GT3 Gen 2. I really like these cars. I think it's one of the gems of the GT3 range. You can't go wrong with any um, GT3. Uh, 2009 car, club sport pack, so it's got the um, cage in the back, sports seats, etc. Yes, it's left-hand drive. Um, hasn't done a huge number of miles, this one. Uh, 9,000 miles, 10, well, 15,000 kilometers on it. I think they're probably the best driving one price point, what you're going to pay for it. This is guided at um, 90 to 110,000 pounds. They're always going to be worth that. The GT3 is a cult and the 997 Gen 2 is pretty high up. Uh, it's just a sweet little uh, car, this. You can do track days. It, it rides way better than it has any right to. Uh, and I'm very interested to see what that one will make. I had to feature this one. I've got a bit of a soft spot for these Rover Coupes. This is P5, this is um, 3.5 litre V8, the Rover engine, same as Range Rover, etc. But they were such an elegant car. They sort of stood shoulder to shoulder with a Rolls Royce um, Silver Shadow. They were in that group, and it used to be the Prime Minister's car as well. You can see Harold Wilson getting picked up outside in his Rover Coupe. And why I love them is because there was a um, friend at school, his dad had one. And once every few months, I went to school, sitting in the back of this, just amazed at this thing. Uh, my parents didn't have cars, anything like this, and it seemed so posh to me. Um, it was another world, this silence as we wafted along, this huge great seat in the back, had no seat belts in those days. And I just think they still stand to today. They are a very elegant, stately car, very unlike any other Rover to me. Um, Rostar wheels and the most beautiful script of coupe on the back. This one is completely unrestored, 72,000 miles from new. Um, obviously, it's used, it's a usable condition. Um, I love originality, and this one is about as original as you can get. It's offered at no reserved, but guided at 18 to 22,000. The car I wanted to show you is this. This is a 348 Spider right-hand drive. Now these are rare things. Um, a right-hand drive, they made 68 of these uh, for the UK market. Now the 348, Ferrari 348, is sort of slightly suffered by the 355 that came afterwards with that wonderful five-valve head and the um, really um, sexy car. And the launch of 348 when their chassis just wasn't good enough. But by the time the Spider came along, they, they'd really done a big revision on the suspension setup and all sorts of tweaks. And because the, the last cars produced were um, the Spider's version, this gets all of that. And the other thing I like about these is it has a manual roof. When you went to the 355, it was the first uh, Ferrari um, V8 soft top with an automatic roof, electric roof. And there's lots of motors. The first time they've done it and the seats have to be in the right position, etc. And it has a habit of not working right when you want it to be working when it's starting to rain or something. 348 manual roof. Um, so it's a sort of simple car and a highly enjoyable car and priced because of the history of 348 at the beginning. I think they're still good value. This one's guided at 52 to 60,000 miles. It's done 19,000 miles. I think, again, there's a lot of car there for the money on that one. OK, I'm going to move to another store now. There's more exciting cars through there. So many cars. I had to get this car out. This is the Rolls-Royce Phantom Coupe. 2008, and it is vast, absolutely huge. 
but beautifully finished. And I've got a bit of a soft spot for this because when this car was launched, um, uh, Rolls-Royce invited me to drive one out to Geneva. So I really got to know it. And it is the most luxurious car. It was the first car I really lived with, with these enormous doors. And then a little button in here that I just press and, oh, it closes itself. So don't worry about the size of the door. V12, 6.75 litres, um, about 450 horsepower, I think they are. It's all immaterial. It's all about the journey and the waftness and sitting behind the little lady that's unfortunately disappeared um, from the radiator because it's parked up at the moment. Um, the other thing about it was the first, I had that starburst interior, so all the sparkly roof on this. And I can just see these cars getting quite collectible because they're rare. I think it's about 160 or they're about right-hand drive examples. Some of them to me look slightly strange because they did it in stainless steel um, bonnet and then up here. I think this is much better being body colour. And the paint is ridiculous. It is mirror absolute mirror because it's all hand finished this car now we since this car was released we now have the rolls royce wraith as the sort of sporting coupe a sort of different sort of car it doesn't quite have the presence of this car which is just huge and yet this car um, is guided at 135 to 155 thousand pounds they were so expensive new i think they're knocking the door of 400 thousand with a few options and this car's only done 23 thousand miles Anyways, another car I wanted to show you, and those are the, some lovely Citroëns in this sale that are super rare. Now, what I wanted to show you were these two Citroën DS Decapitable. This is the convertible version of the Citroën DS, and I've always thought these are so elegant, these cars. They are helped by having the hydraulic suspension, which is in fully deflated form when they're not running. As soon as you started this car up, it would come up about three or four inches. And the other thing that helps is they're longer than a normal DS because you can see the wheels right at the back here. There's hardly any overhang because they were actually created out of the Citroen DS Safari rather than the saloons. And that's why they look so different. Um, two examples here. This is a 1965 one. They made around 1300 or thereabouts. I was quite sure of the figures because there were some aftermarket versions as well. But about uh, 1300 or thereabouts, but only 50 in right-hand drive in total over a number of years. So this being right-hand drive is thought to be around one of the 10 that still survive today. And this DS21 is 1970, that's 1965, 1970, the later version. This has got the flared in lights as well, but left-hand drive this one. I don't know, it'd be fascinating what they're gonna make these. These have come from uh, the Warwickshire collection and they haven't actually run for a few years. So they were in running conditions five years ago, but they just need a little bit of um, care and attention. But I just love the interior, particularly of this 65 one, and that crazy button brake on them as well. Such an elegant way to drift through the French countryside or the English Cotswolds or something like that. And both of them are guided at very similar money. One's 90 to 105,000, well, actually both guided at the same price, 90 to 105,000 pounds for two very rare Citroëns. One more Citroën I want to show you in here, and then we're going to dive to a different shed. Yeah, it's really tight down here, but I thought I had to show you this Citroen SM. 1971, this car. This was from that marriage between Maserati and Citroen. So it has the V6, 2.7 litre Maserati engine, front wheel drive, and just a spaceship when this came out. Um, I've got fond memories. My parents were buying a Citroen Diane 6 in a Citroen um, dealership and shut me up. They put me in one of these and I was as happy as you could be in this car. Always worshipped them from then on. Um, a fast GT car, so wide at the front and then tapers to the rear, much narrower at the rear than it is at the front. Um, this car again is from this collection, so it hasn't run for a few years and it's very sensibly guided, I think, at 18 to 22,000 pounds. Wouldn't it be great to see that back on the road again? Right, that's sort of all in here. We're going to move to a different uh, place where there's a huge collection of Porsche and a few other cars. So we're going to move there now. OK, here's the third haul of cars. And I am just shocked because this is a collection of Porsche in this area. 35 cars from one owner, uh, Stuttgart collection is what they've called it. 
and there's just too many to list, but there's some real highlights in here. Obviously, right-hand drive, Speedster here. Left-hand drive, really pretty Carrera RS, 964 RS, in this color, really suits it, I think. 356. Here, there's one car I wanted to show you here. This is the Turbo S, 993 Turbo S in right-hand drive. You sort of tell it's an S because it has that extra scoop in the rear wing, there's yellow belts, and this had more horsepower and trick suspension, as I say, super rare in the UK, just 26 right-hand drive cars produced. Two 924 S's, look super sharp to me, rarely, don't often see those. A Targa, I love these early Targas um, with the stainless steel hoop. And you can tell it's a US car. They had a um, Pacific headlight um, size. There was regulation on the size of the headlight. You can change it for a standard one if you want. Flat nose. So this is the 930 Turbo Ultimate Edition, really. Special equipment, you can tell from this. The flat nose, so there's different wings, more aerodynamic. These weren't particularly loved because they didn't have the 911 typical look at the front, but now people are recognizing them because they were so much more money than a regular 930 LE. I can see it's all lever inside, right-hand drive again. That will fetch you know, good money. I expect this guy about 130,000 or thereabouts. Hiding over there is a 50th anniversary 991 Porsche. Right-hand drive again. Now I like these um, 944 convertibles. Rare, work really well. Manual gearbox, four cylinders, a um, 994 turbo here in black, the pinstripe, which is such a distinctive car, DeLorean. Not my um, cup of tea, but if you want one, there's a, there's a DeLorean for you. Ah, oh, what else have we got? Yeah, another, is that another one? Look, there we are, 20, 26 right-hand drive cars, and here's another one, another 993 Turbo S with those distinctive wings. I could, I could just go on. I don't know where to stop on these. show you this one actually a Cosworth Sierra Cosworth Moonstone colors what struck me about this one is the originality um, this was the right color to have it it's 1987 they were super exciting cars when these first came out and this car had a, a life up until the 90s and then was just kept in a garage went for occasional MOTs 43,000 miles this car and guided at 35 to 40,000 pounds because of its originality, I think that's worth that actually, just as a moment in time. And uh, you, could, you could keep that, you could restore it and you always sort of get your money back. I just think they're a hero car to a lot of people. It continues in here, bright red tur 930 turbo. This is a recreation um, 2.7 RS. It's actually a three litre version, Viper green with the cage. Looks pretty well done to me. 2 litre car, 911T, so the 2 litre super early 911s, the shorter wheelbase, highly sought after now, carburetor engine. There's also a really nice uh, white 911S here, a 2 litre car as well. The very early 911s have a real following, especially with the race series as well, so the road cars are getting rarer and rarer. What else have we got here? 996R, um, RS. I always thought these were so extreme, this car. If I press the rear window on this, you can see it's plastic. Um, so crazy lightweight, very stiff suspension on road. It's quite a thing. This is probably my favorite 911 of all, a Carrera um, Club Sport. This was um, just a three liter CS time and they came out of this, they, they did a small number of changes, but they all added up to a most wonderful driving 911. And used to be able to pick them up for quite uh, quite cheaply. Not anymore. They're a hundred and some. I think this guy is 120 to 140 thousand. But I promise you, it's the sweetest driving 911 of all. Down here, there's even more to look at. Okay, more stars down here. I looked at this 6R4. I've never seen a tidier one. It looks like a works car. It isn't actually. It's a privateer car that did raced in period and did extremely well. I think it did around fourth position on the Manx Rally last thing. It's now been restored to just perfect condition, really. You don't normally see a rally car as good as this. The history far is crazy as well. But what a thing to belt up um, Lord March's drive or something like that, or just to surprise people, because it's obviously road roads. It's just been MOT'd. 
SK150, a really smart one. Well, I really wanted to show you this though, a 22B. Now, 22Bs got the name because all impressors at the time were two litre. This was 2.2 litre, and you can tell it had a different engine in it. It's got red crackle on the inlet manifolds of the engine. And of course, it was two door rather than a regular four door you get on normal, most impressors. The gold wheels. This was 1998. And I can remember for the uh, launch edition of Evo, we were desperate for one of these because just 16 came to the UK and we managed to get one. They had the Japanese cars with their sort of short geared and they put a slightly longer gear pro drive for the UK cars. But this is actually a, a Japanese one of the, I think it was 400 that went to the UK, um, sorry, the Japanese market. Yeah. And this car is 326 of those, but was imported immediately brand new from Japan. So it didn't, it didn't turn a wheel in Japan. It's only been in the UK ever since. They're expensive cars now. They've got a real cult following and this is guided at 70 to 80,000 pounds, but it looks absolutely mint. Oh, more treasures down here. Quite taken by this 355 Spider. Just a spec, lovely green spec and the most perfect green and tan interior. Very hard to do, but looks terrific on this car. Another one. Looks like your regular two-door early Range Rover. It's not. Um, JK's car, he's tweaked it. It's 4.6 litre crazy machine, I think, is it? Yeah, it's still automatic. So you basically wouldn't know, but that's going to surprise a lot of people on the road. But probably not quite as much as this car, the LM002. What a mad, mad idea this one was. Um, very lucky uh, experience these um, with Valentino Balboni as well at the wheel and myself having a, a little drive in them. They're like no other car to drive. You sit either side of this enormous transmission tunnel and up front is a Countach quattro valve engine, 5.2 litre engine, four valve heads, etc. This is desert spec. I just looked underneath it. All the carburetors are enclosed. There's a special air filter with um, dust collectors there. The winch. Basically, you, you don't get stuck, you just tow other people out who get stuck. That's what, that was an option in period. Um, but just great to see it here. I actually really like the colour of this car. Pirelli have now started to make the tyres for this car again, so there's no problem getting tyres for it. The steel rims are probably better than the alloy rims. It's just a bit of fun, this car, really. Um, you, if you drive around in it, get used to single-figure MPG, but what a statement. And when you go and fill it up, the garage will love you because it's well over 200 litres to fill the tank on one of these. Um, I say I'm very lucky to experience with Vanity and Balboni, who showed me after I challenged him that it will oversteer around corners. You don't want to do that very often. God, there's another one, this uh, 993 Carrera RS. I think there's two in the sale. This one looks super smart in red, but actually the car I wanted to show you is this, the BMW M3 CSL. This is 2004 when this car arrived and we were so excited when we saw the information on this when it came into Evo. This is a um, lovely example. This color, they, they're available in black as well. Looks super sharp, I always thought, in a silver because it sets off the carbon roof which is the first time we've seen that. It's got a carbon uh, boot lid on it as well and little trick bits of carbon around here that you can see here on the front as well. But the really special bit I want to show you is the engine on this car. One thing about CSLs, they didn't have the manual gearbox. They obviously had the SMG gearbox, paddle shift, First time we'd seen it, it gave it a sort of racier feel, but we've got used to quicker changes. But the clowning gore of this car was the sound, the induction bar you got from this wonderful carbon induction box here. Always had the six throttle bodies, but there's this open throat here, and it gave a serious bar like we've never experienced before in an M3. It's pretty special, this car. It's 9,000 miles from new. Um, they made about 1,300 of these cars, and so because it's so low mileage, it's actually guided at 75 to 85,000 pounds. But they're getting very collectible. There we go. So this is where the auction is actually going to take place. So I say, say again, Friday, July the 31st, 12 o'clock it starts, and then day two is Saturday the 1st of August. Again, a 12 o'clock start. 
They're waiting for your telephone bids. That's where they're all coming up there. Auctioneer will be operating up there. Jonathan will be up there. All details are on the Silverstone website. So silverstoneauctions.com. You need to register if you're going to bid. You can leave a proxy bid or you can arrange a telephone bid when your lot comes up. Sorry it's been such a rush, but with 226 cars to get through, I'm told £20 million worth of cars are going under the hammer over those two days. But I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.